part of that decision by the judge, which surprised me uh, more than a little bit, saying, well, he fought extradition, so that makes him a flight risk here in Wisconsin. Hmm. I want to know if that sounds right. If it, maybe I'm just off here a little bit. But from my perspective, I don't, I, it just didn't sound right. Let's bring in the think tank. They're all smart. They're all in Los Angeles, California, out on the left coast, which makes them even smarter, right? Joining us tonight, former federal prosecutor, Nima Romani is with us. Also, DeWitt Lacey, who's a civil rights attorney, former criminal defense attorney. And Lara Uretzian, criminal defense attorney, represented, um, what was that guy's name again? Hmm. You want to say it? Remember. You want Scott Peterson. Scott, Pe Scott Peterson. Scott Peterson. All right. Um, I'll start with you, Lara. Ladies first. Uh, if you fight extradition to be brought into another jurisdiction and you end up there, is that evidence that you are a flight risk? Not at all. I mean, I was surprised that he even said that. Any attorney, whether on the prosecution side or defense side, is going to tell you. I mean, every defendant has the right to fight. You can fight extradition. It doesn't mean you're a flight risk. In fact, in this case, I think he's anything but a flight risk. We know that he turned himself in. Uh, and so clearly, and he's he's entitled to having lawyers, he's entitled to fight extradition or to fight on at any level. So to me, that was not convincing at all. And I'm not really sure why that two million number, that was clearly the number that the prosecution had asked for. And he granted that. Uh, I mean, why the two million? It could have been a million. It could have been maybe 750 as the defense had requested. I mean, that even that's a high number in, in this case. Neema, what do you think? I mean, I agree with Laura that fighting extradition isn't evidence of risk of flight, but he's certainly a danger to the community. This $2 million bond is more than generous. He's killed two people. He's injured another. So the fact that a murderer or alleged murderer is out on bond is a gift. So, you know, he shouldn't be questioning the judge's decision to issue bond in this case. All right, but do even it. The judge didn't even mention the, uh, this, the dangerousness aspect. He really focused, interestingly, on the flight risk part of it. And that was the weakest argument he could have given. And as far as whether he's a danger to society, yes, obviously, we have a very serious crime with two individuals who are deceased at this point. But I mean, the claim here is that it was in self defense. And I'm guessing that there's no uh, prior issues or prior arrests or convictions with this, uh, with this kid. And clearly, right away, he turns himself in. So again, well, I mean, of course, I, that's I the defense. It's the said. only defense in the case. I mean, he admitted to killing two people. I mean, he walked in the police station and said it. So his only possible defense in this case is self-defense. So I'm not surprised uh, that he's raising that defense. But someone that crosses state lines with an AR-15 and goes into a scene of civil unrest is a dangerous individual. Well, I, I, Nima, I, I don't think they're going to concede the fact that the AR-15 was brought from Illinois into Wisconsin. Yes. We think he got it from someone in Wisconsin. DeWitt, um, how do you see this, this defendant? 17 years old. I mean, he's been uh, – half the country has villainized him. The other half looks at him as, as someone who is defending himself. Uh, I don't know of any if it's fair to, to call him a villain uh, necessarily. Uh, he is a, a young kid, but I will tell you what. He is absolutely a flight risk. I mean, the notion that he turned himself immediately is almost laughable. I mean, this is the kid who left right after he shot and killed two people and went 30 miles away to his home. Now, look, granted, they say he tried to turn himself into law enforcement as uh, he was walking away from the crime scene where he killed two people. Uh, he still definitely left uh, that locale. I want to do it. I want to so, check. And I don't know if we have it available, but do we have that video of him walking away? So uh, we could take a look at it. If we have it, we have it. If we don't, we don't. Uh, at this moment. Uh, but that's an important point, and I'm wondering um, how that would be interpreted, because after the, the, he's chased by the, the crowd, gets hit in the head, then trips and falls, here he goes. So let's watch this. Go ahead, DeWitt. You tell me if it looks so, like, is he, is he surrendering himself? Uh, I don't know if he's surrendering himself, but he, I think at, at this point, he may be showing uh, to law enforcement that he's not an aggressor running with a weapon. He definitely has his hands up. Uh, you hear people uh, saying, this guy right here just shot somebody. Uh, but they, nonetheless, they tell him to leave. And so he, le he leaves that area. 
but he leaves and goes all the way home 30 miles away to another state. Um, so, you know, I don't know what real efforts were made to turn himself in. But uh, how about this moment fight, right here? Right here. This is the part where he approaches the squad car. He's trying to talk to someone and immediately they, they send him away. I mean, is that his fault or law enforcement's fault? No, it, it's not his fault that they tell him to go away. It is his fault that he takes that to mean get in your car and drive across state line. Okay. But where else is he uh, supposed that, to go do it? I mean, where else do people go when law enforcement tells you you need to leave the scene? They go home. How about and then he still shot turned himself? And even after well, that, let, let Laura give me an opportunity to answer the question. He just shot two people. If he was really insistent upon turning himself in, he could have went to the police department to turn himself in there. However, he did not. He went home, and I would I would argue that the only reason he turned himself in is because there was a media uh, a storm over him shooting and killing two people. All right, I want you to take a listen to Kyle Rittenhouse. He actually spoke today for, you know, a short time uh, during court. Let's take a listen. All right, thank you. Mr. Rittenhouse, uh, again, can you hear me clearly? This is the commissioner speaking. Yes. All right, thank you. Now, you have a right, sir, when you're held in custody in a felony case in the state of Wisconsin to have a preliminary hearing held within 10 days of your initial appearance. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. All right, but you also have the right, sir, to waive that time limit, allow this court and ask the court to toll time in order to schedule your preliminary hearing farther out or beyond that 10 day limit. Do you understand that as well, sir? Yes, sir. All right, that's what your attorney, Mr. Richards, indicates you wish to do. Do you understand that? Yes. Is that what, in fact, you do wish to do, sir? Yes. All right, December 3rd, the preliminary hearing. Um, Larry, let me ask you. At this trial, because I think there will be a trial here, um, unless there's a plea, but I don't think the state is going to go there. Do you think he has to testify in his own defense, or will they rely upon the videos? I'm not sure. I haven't seen all the videos. I mean, if there's some good videos that show people attacking him or someone else with a gun, that's my understanding from reading some of the news articles then maybe he doesn't have to testify. But generally, in a self-defense case, it, you know, even though I know, it's generally tough to make you do. that decision, I could see... But there's videos could everywhere. Him the if whole, there's videos everywhere. The second and, and third shooting, clear as day on video. The first shooting, um, there's some video from a distance. Um, there's other eyewitnesses there. Can, can they get away with this self-defense? All right, let me do this. Nima, if he does take the stand... How do you approach him? He's 17 years old. Are you going to attack? I mean, I've seen prosecutors attack defendants on cross-examination. What's the tone? What's the approach? Vinny, I go after him, and I go after him hard. You know, every single lie, every single inconsistent statement to law enforcement from you know him saying he was attacked with a skateboard, with a baseball bat, you know, the evidence that there is no you know, bruises, cuts, abrasions to his head. So I think you have to go after him hard. You have to convince the juror that this is a murderer, someone who is seeking violence and not some poor young kid who is defending himself from an angry, violent mob. But Nima, sometimes that can backfire because some of the jurors may be sympathetic with this defendant who's only 17. I mean, after all, let's not forget. That's that's huge here. He's He is, after all, a kid. He's 17, no, he looks like a and there's he rioters. That, yeah, he looks. You could tell even in court, he's lost. I don't even. I couldn't even tell if he really truly understood his rights. So I could see a jury, oh, okay. at least some members on that jury, who will be sympathetic, and they may not like a prosecutor who's attacking this 17 year old and is super aggressive. Sometimes the softer approach, if you're a prosecutor, might be more helpful. So I, I'm not really sure which which way the, the prosecutors here are going to go, but you know, attacking him may really backfire on them. Well, I mean, look, there's I, a lot look, of folks. I, I'll have to agree with Lana here. I think going after the 17-year-old kid in a very aggressive manner might be problematic. However, I will submit to all of you that one person who has not been indicted yet and should be is his mother. Mama should be in jail. And that is someone who has a, an adult responsibility, uh, who took her son to this protest, armed him, uh, and sent him out here uh, where he was totally ill-equipped to handle the circumstances that he was involved in. Uh, I think the mother has uh, some uh, bearing of responsibility here. 
And frankly, she should be in jail herself. Now, we, we, we do believe that the mother is the one that drove him uh, to, the, uh, to Kenosha. Uh, but the arming, I don't think she was involved in the arming. There's someone else who has come forward and, and spoken publicly yeah. about providing the uh, AR-15. But here's what I want to do. I want to bring it back. Um, you know, there's two people that are dead. Uh, one of them was the young man who had the skateboard. And his dad spoke at the hearing today. And it, it's heartbreaking. He's got a mixture of heartbreak and anger, which is uh, completely understandable. Let's take a listen. I would like to say that, uh, you know, this, this style guy is a flight risk. He is, he's facing long time in prison. Uh, and he has people out there that will help him. Uh, organizations of uh, militia members that are raising money for his defense right now. They can harbor him. He can yeah, I'm going to object to this. There's no basis in fact. Uh, Mr. Mr. Richards, Mr. Richards, that's his, uh, the, Mr. Huber's opinion. He may state his opinion pursuant to the current status of the law in Wisconsin. I'm going to allow him to state that position. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse thinks he's above the law. He's been treated as such uh, by law enforcement. And so he believes he's justified in this case. And for, for him to run uh, wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, th and, and this defense of self-defense, that is impossible. That is impossible. I don't know what part of the video you watched, but he already killed a guy, shot him in the head, and then tried to run. And my son was a hero. He tried to stop him. And so did everybody else. He was an active shooter, and he tried to flee. And my son lost his life protecting other people. He was a hero. And uh, anyone who says otherwise is dead wrong, including the president, for to comment on that. How dare he? He needs to just stay on Twitter. I'm for doubling his bond. It should be for for $10 million, because there's people out there raising money right now, making it their own fight, that it's about gun rights, and it's not about gun rights. My son was killed. Another man was killed. They didn't deserve to be killed, and that guy was unarmed. And my son was unarmed. He hit him in the shoulder with a skateboard. You know, he was a hero. And the, the heartbreak is real, and we understand that. Um, one thing that he said, though, he, he referred to Kyle Rittenhouse as an active shooter. Uh, DeWitt, do you see it that way? Absolutely. I agree 1,000% with Mr. Huber. Rittenhouse is an active shooter. There are members of the public that saw him murder someone, uh, and they wanted to affect the citizen's arrest, if you will, and or stop him from getting away so that he could be brought to justice. Now, I get it. Uh, he might have been scared. Uh, because uh, somebody swung a skateboard at him. But this is danger that he created. If he hadn't shot the other man in the face, uh, nobody would be chasing him. Uh, and that doesn't mean you get to run willy-nilly through a crowd of protesters shooting. This is just ridiculous that he is thought of as some type of hero. He is an active shooter. You know, one of the other... Um factors in all of this, and, and, and the, the defense will not concede that he committed murder in the first shooting. They're saying that is self-defense as well. Um, Neem, I have a legal question for you. Um, how does the first shooting impact the second shooting? Does it make any difference if the first shooting is found to be self-defense? Does that impact the way the actions of everyone involved um, are perceived in the second and third shooting? I think so, right? It's You have to use as much force as is reasonable to protect yourself from substantial bodily harm, right? Or whatever the equivalent standard is there in Wisconsin. So the jurors do believe that, you know, Rittenhouse was acting in self-defense for the first shooting. I don't see how they convict him of murder, um, intentional murder or attempted murder for the second and third shootings. It's going to be one or all in this type of case. All right, we've got a lot more to cover tonight. Uh, we're going to continue to track that story, obviously. But we've got all L.A. lawyers tonight, so I had to do some sort of an entertainment story. Mm -hmm. Coming up 
Johnny Depp and his libel lawsuit. Big decision made by the court. We've got it for you next.